topic as you all know uh, i'll i'll skip to to all this because uski wajah ye hai ki you have all uh, basically uh, heard what you what 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 has been told ha huh, this i would definitely just go through it mai bata bhi raha tha ki so so this was probably pre 1980s 80s and then 90s and then 2000 so 2000 mein ye uh, concept shuru ho gaya tha in fact 90s mein bhi इस पे काम शुरू हो गया था कि जो हार्ट फेलियर है चूँकि उसकी पैथोफिजियोलॉजी बढ़ की अंडरस्टैंडिंग बढ़ती जा रही थी सो उसको करेक्शन के बारे में सोचना उस वक्त भी शुरू हो गए थे और ये डिवाइसेस हैं जो उस वक्त मुख्तलिफ़ टाइम पे लॉन्च हुई और अब एवेंचुअली वी हैव कम टू दिस स्टेज जिसकी तरफ मैं अभी आने लगा हूँ सो एज आई सेट आई आई स्किप दिस उसकी वजह ये कि वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस बट जनरली ये एक स्लाइड है जो बड़ी ज़बरदस्त जिसमें अगर आप देखें तो मोटेलिटी सी आर टी आई सी डी और नंबर्स नीडेड टू ट्रीट पेशेंट तो एज यू कैन सी सी आर टी के देखें वन ऑफ द बेस्ट एक्चुअली अच्छा ठीक सो सो आई एज आई सेड आई जस्ट स्किप दी स्लाइड्स बिकॉज जो माई माई टू प्रीवियस कॉलीग्स है टच दी so the the pathophysiology and the uh, the the medicines uh, in the heart failure uh, moving on to to these options so as i said this heart failure is basically both uh, contractile dysfunction and mechanical and electrical so the correction uh, has been thought of is the three process which is crt and then later on became the his and now lately we do left bundle pacing uh these were some of the best trials uh, up to date which shows the benefit of the uh, crt device uh so starting from crt this is how a crt device is uh, uh is implanted so there you can see the this is the device these are the three leads the atrial lead the coronary sinus lead and the rv lead uh the only limitation in a crt device is the availability of a good vein and uh, and the ideal vein is normally a posterolateral branch of the coronary sinus this is where if a lead lv lead is fixed results in the best optimized results so sorry about some of the slides have actually uh okay i think i'll go back so the second second modality of pacing is his bundle pacing now in his bundle pacing what is done is actually we implant a lead at the level of his and the idea is to capture his and so produce as much as physiological pacing as possible this is normally considered uh, this was at some, at one stage considered as a very good pacing modality and the mechanism was reduction in qrs duration with his bundle pacing as you can see these are the three ecgs so if you see the top ecg this is pre pacing and the one is post his bundle pacing and you can see very clearly in post his bundle pacing the qrs duration has also gotten narrow and the the width is narrow and the qrs has gotten sharpen so this is pre his now this is a his bundle lead so the standard this is a standard pacemaker with two leads so this is an atrial lead and the second lead goes in and fix into his this was one of our earlier patient it was done about 3 4 years ago 
and this patient is still with us. He comes with follow-up and he is doing remarkably well. This is a post his bundle ECG and as you can see, compare the pre and post and you can see remarkable difference. And he has improved significantly from NYHA class 3, now is easily between class 1 and class 2. There are some pitfalls in the his bundle pacing which is lead dislodgement and uh, obviously uh, uh, reduced longevity of the uh, generator and it depends on the ex experience. So this, if the center is more experienced, the better results will be available of his bundle pacing. Then come the, the most newer of them all which is left bundle pacing. So with the left bundle, left bundle branch area pacing, what is being done is we try to fix the lead so as to capture the left bundle and that too from the right side. So it is in the RV but placed at such a location that it can catch the left bundle. Now of that four possibilities can still rise. One is that it can selectively catch the left bundle, which is the best of all. The second would be that it non-selectively ca catch left bundle and the third would be ju to just capture the septum. In either of these three, the end result still is not bad. Obviously, the ideal is to catch the left bundle. Now, I'll show how, how that is being done. So, the, the idea behind this is that in some of these patients, the heart failure is because of left bundle branch block and so and, and uh, these are the candidates, ideal candidates which if you have AV block along with heart failure, these become the ideal patients. So if you can, so if this is a left bundle branch block and you can catch this area, you can again produce physiological pacing. This is how it looks like in uh, in video. Uh, so this is a left bundle, left bundle being caught, this is septum and that is the tip of the lead. Uh, can these videos be run? Videos are pitchly, pitchly. Vapas, back. So I wish, I think uh, it, uh, they are normally, they are videos but anyway. so. So this is a left bundle, left bundle selectively being paced and if I, if I had been able to show you these two images in running form, Sir Shabazz, you would have noticed a hell of a difference, a hell of a difference. I wish I could have shown you somehow the, I, 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 that's how the, the usual problem is that video is not compatible. But one is pre and one is post and this patient has done remarkably well. Uh, my new details of how we do it electrophysiologically the procedure and see have a look at this left this v1 this is remarkable and not only not only the change happened electrically but again uh, symptoms wise this patient is doing remarkably well So CRT, I just uh, did mention before, these, th this was particulars of one of my patient. As I said, I aim to hit the posterolateral vein of the coronary sinus and coronary sinus is a structure, venous structure which opens up into the right atrium and goes all the way around the mitral annulus and then has tributaries and the aim is to fit the LV lead here. So again, a pre-CRT QRS, uh, this is how a CRT procedure is being done. Inko uh, chala sakte, can these videos be run please? Kare? Okay, anyway. So, so, yahan yahan se kare, kare, do it. Okay. So anyway, so this is, this is the generator and these are the leads and you can see the LV lead in RAO projection 
and the LV lead in LAO projection. So it's a three lead procedure, CRT. And as you can see, post CRT, there is a clear cut narrowing of the QRS and symptomatically again, this patient has got benefit. NYHA class gotten very better and his echocardiographic uh, dimensions have tremendously approved, improved. Sorry. Uh, another version, the previous one was a CRTP. Now this is a CRTD. Uh, similar mechanism, similar system, except the, the, that the pacing lead is replaced by a defibrillator lead. So this was pre-procedure ECG. This was the VT. This is how the procedure is being done. Let's run it. Run it. Now try it. Yes, try here. Anyway, so this is coronary sinus. I think that's another representation. And this is again end of procedures video. And this is you can see the coronary, this is the LV lead in, the, in one of the target veins. And this is the ICD lead, so the defibrillator lead showing the coil over it. And this is the post CRT lead. Uh, ICDs do play a role in heart failure, uh, but not the correction of the problem, but reduce mortality. So this is how an ICD device looks like. A single lead ICD, that's the generator, that's the lead. A dual chamber ICD. And remember, these are all devices for heart failure. With this, I thank you all and uh, thank you so much. So the, the question by Professor uh, Shahbaz Qureshi is that how would I compare a CRT with left bundle pacing device? Uh, sir, so, late, so the latest guidelines till as we speak places CRT as better than left bundle. So at the moment, the sort of priority one goes for CRT implantation. But if due to any reason, either technically it can't be done, like the vein is not good, the procedure is abundant and so on, then you go for left bundle pacing. Or if there is any contraindication to a CRT and the criteria fulfills, then you do a left bundle pacing. So as we speak, the CRT would still be a, a shed or step above the left bundle. QRS duration, if it is more than 150, it's very beneficial. For the left bundle branch pacing, would QRS duration of a narrower uh, uh, size, um, can that be a criteria in the future? Uh, sir, uh, the width of the QRS uh, obviously uh, as, as uh, depicted by left bundle obviously matters. And the broader the QRS is, the it shows that there is electrical problem. And as I said, these devices correct the mechanical slash contractility problem by electrical solution. So the answer to your question would be that yes, not at the moment, but if later more studies are done, maybe the answer comes that even with narrower QRS, if you catch them early and do this spacing, remember at the moment I am talking in terms of an AV block. Right? So in AV block, irrespective of the QRS width, you can do left bundle pacing. 
right? In fact, most of the electrophysiologists now prefer that rather to implant a standard pacemaker, which is the RV pacing, apical, go for the left bundle pacing because that preferable. But at the moment, this is in case of AV block and heart failure. But for example, your question is, if there is no AV block, it is just a heart failure and it is not a full blown left bundle. So for that, I think at the moment, the data is not enough to say that yes, go for it. There are two reasons. One, the left bundle itself has not been studied enough because in the left bundle, we don't know which level of the disease is involved, which level of fibers. If we can study that, then a time will come that they will say, yes, go for it even with this QRS width. I think that, that would probably your answer. Uh, couldn't hear you. If a patient, yes, yes. you are uh, subjecting him to pacemaker because of AF with fast ventricular rate, not controlling by medication. You're doing AV node block and now pacing the ventricle. Now, what about LB, uh, left bundle pacing and selective right pacing? Any comparison between the two? Hmm. So, 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 uh, so, Dr. Sub, question is basically, a patient who has got a permanent AF in which an electrophysiologist has decided that, that I can't ablate AF, AF can't be ablated, so better go for AV node ablation and then followed by a pacemaker, right? Well, in that case, see, once the AV node is ablated, now all you need is an paced support it would be probably the standard pacemaker because it would be a single lead you don't need an atrial lead now so all you need is a single lead which is normally placed in rv apex the answer to your question i understood your question i think not enough data is available in this regard that rather to in the scenario rather to pace the rv apex why not pace the left bundle and so sort of provide him some sort of physiological. I understand that. I think not enough data to my mind because remember these patients are very few in which you do AV node ablation intentionally and then a pacemaker. So it is pace and ablate or ablate and pace. So not to my knowledge but it's a good question actually. 